Anyway, he's on a subway, a crowded subway, and this guy gets on. And George Leonard had been studying Aikido for years at that point. And this guy was like looking for a fight and he was, you know, cursing at other passengers and, and uh, you know, he was making his way down the car and, and towards him and he thought, you know, okay, I guess I'm going to have to, you know, use my Aikido. He was an American guy, big guy. Yep. And um, just before he thought he had to spring into action, this old man who was sitting on one of the bench seats called out to this drunken guy and went, hey, hi, man, how are you? That kind of thing in Japanese, of course. Right. And the guy got very abusive towards the old man. The old man just was grinning and, you know, greeting, come here, tell me you've had a hard day, <laughs> come and tell me. And the guy sits down with him and, and, and he's telling about his it. story yeah. and his wife had died and he had lost his job, yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. just terrible things had happened to him and then he'd gotten drunk and he was out of his mind. And he ended up on the bench, you know, with his head in the old man's lap, sobbing like a baby. And the old man was stroking his hair, and you know, well, it's okay, you know, it's, it's been a bad, day, you know. And George Leonard was just like, that was Aikido, you know. He says, now I know about Aikido, you know, because that was Aikido. It wasn't about doing a technique on the guy to, you know, to pin him to the floor or something. It was connecting from the heart and and letting him express what his in his case, his, his incredible despair was about. But and that's why I think it's so important, because, when you you know, if you sit back and you look at the world we now live in, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's incredibly crowded. It's, you know, all sorts of uh, polarization and politically and economically and religiously. And there's just, you know, all of these factions and groups. And the pains and the sufferings all over. Yeah, pain and suffering, and 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 we really have a primate monkey brain still. Yeah, it's all about you know the emotional structure. It's yeah. really about fighting and 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 you know and having a group, you know that you relate with, and then it's us and them, and you know and all of that breaks down in Aikido, and it's the only, it's really the only, um, only discipline I've ever seen or studied, where it works within a context of conflict. To create harmony. Can we talk about the word that I uh, came up with? The oneness. You know, we talked about the heart communication, yeah. compassion, and the wilderness. The atmosphere is different there compared to the daily situation of what's happening in life and the frustration and the, what happened in the stock market or whatever the relationship may be. Yeah. So, to have a d different wavelengths to connect. I thought about the, to use the word oneness, but the, 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 the term is maybe spiritual in a way. Uh, there's a vital, some you know, philosophy, and also the uh, Zen and meditation. Meditation is uh, mind and body being one kind of notion. You know, the body is uh, affected by the mind, and, and uh, but usually we have the mind affect, you know, functioning outside of the body, yeah. and there's a gap in between, and therefore the body suffers, you know, if I, I don't know if I make, make sense no, when I say that. Yeah. yeah, so, so you, number one, you have to be one yourself to be compassionate, to see clearly what's happening, and then you can relate to, and that's right. the old man that I feel like you're talking about. That's exactly right. Yeah. And in the, in the practice of Aikido, um, you often get stuck, like you'll, you'll be, you know, somebody will be kind of glommed onto you and you're, and you got this idea, okay, I need to throw this guy over here, and and it doesn't you, work, you know. And especially American men, yeah. where I think most Western men are raised with the idea that muscle and force e equals power, mm -hmm. and if it doesn't work, you just add more. You know, it's yeah. like the shock and awe. You know, yeah, just yeah. give them a yeah, lot yeah, of power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Aikido, the more you add, the less it works, yeah. because it creates more resistance. You know, there, there's a time. Sorry to interrupt, but this is important from my point. But Zen. One of the words is uh, uh, jigo jibaku. It is as if you tighten yourself by your own rope. Yes, that's excellent. <laughs> that's exactly how it feels. More you try, yeah, you tighten up. Yeah. So the the bottom line in Aikido really is it's never about the attacker. It's about how you feel about it. About yourself, okay. your inner balance and yeah. so forth. Yeah, so the whole time, people a lot of times they sign up to do Aikido because they think, you know, well, you know, I'm gonna, I need to deal with other people and, you know, 
No, it's that's not the point. It's the point. The harmony within. Once you deal with you, that takes care of itself. Wow. You uh, it, and it really creates a lot of um, confusion for uh, at the beginning, of course. Yeah, because yeah. you're thinking, well, how is it I'm responsible for what's happening to him? Yeah. Well, because you can change it for one thing, just by changing you, that won't exist that way anymore. You won't perceive it that way, and it will transform. So who's really got the control here? The guy, or you're feeling vulnerable because he's yelling at you and wants to hit you, but he's really the vulnerable one. You know, he's lost his center mentally, physically. <laughs> oh, let me go a step at a time, and I want to, uh, in the other experience with the meditation, I personally went through this and spending 10 days sitting, uh, 12 hours every day. Like a Vipassana? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. So eight days I've been sitting, I was tortured. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, finally the time came that I had no escape. And I was sweating all over the place and the pains all over. And I could hear the uh, cricket from my palm because it was so wet and, uh, you know, the night time. I mean, when it, my mind was a little calm. But eventually came to the point that I need ambulance or something like that, almost. <laughs> but then, for whatever reason, I look at my whole body sensation and start to think. This may be triggered by some of the reading in the past, I don't know. Is it because painful because I'm trying to escape from the pain? And then I start to look at the pain itself, and boom. Yeah, then it happens. It just happened that all the, the bind is gone, and I was uh, amazed to that, you know. That's a, what a great experience. Yeah, that, that is just the physical experiential evidence of if you try it, it doesn't happen. You have to let go when, because when it comes to the totally, totally, totally impossible situation, then you finally, you, your ego that is trying to fight against whatever is happening, yeah. die, kind of thing. Yeah. I had an experience like that once in doing uh, yoga. It was called white tantric yoga. It was 11 hours. Oh, tantric. You did a tantric. Yeah, okay. Yeah, white tantric. Which is like circulating the... Yeah, it's, you do it in a group. There's a two, three, four hundred people. Right. Okay. And, and, and a, you have a partner, yeah. and you're in a in a row. Right. And um, this was with you know, when Yogi Bhajan was still alive. He led this particular white tantric, and and uh, you know you go into these positions you know, for for an hour and without moving. Sometimes your arms are up like this, you know, for an hour, and you know pretty. Pretty soon it hurts, you know, and your arms are starting to shake, and you know. In the Kundalini, they do something like that. This but is Kundalini. Oh, this is Kundalini, not yeah. the tantric. Yeah, yeah, white tantric. Oh, it's part of Kundalini. Okay, yeah. right. Okay, I got the feel. Yeah, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah, and you're, you know, you feel yeah. this, and, and you feel all this resistance. I just want to put my arms down, you know. Right. I don't like pain, you know. I don't like to, you know. This. Why do I? Why am I doing this? You know, you go through the head trip. Yeah. Why am I sitting in meditation? Yeah, yeah, the same like, thing. You know, it's like it hurts. You know, I, I don't need pain. And then you start to realize that every time we get a little uncomfortable, we avoid it. You know, we just, you know, we would put our arm down or we wouldn't stay in it and go through it. We would just stop. And, but you can't stop. You know, you have a partner and you're, you know. So I had that experience you just described of suddenly I was just sort of the pain just disappeared and it was like. Ecstasy. Oh, yeah. It was like all this awareness opened up that I could not have had any other way. It was like that technology and that particular pose and the breathing generated an opportunity to have this breakthrough of consciousness that I couldn't have had. I, I mean, it was unique to that situation. It was like, wow, that is so cool. In, in Zen, they call it the mind and body falling off, kind of re, re, uh, dissolution kind of a yeah. notion that the melting and the boundaries Fascinating. those type of thing. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's wonderful. And Aikido, you get some of that. And the barefoot hiking I used to do, you know, you, when I would go for a, a minimum of an entire day barefoot. In the Me, minimum of uh, An entire day oh, okay. barefoot. <laughs> and in the desert. You know, so, you know, the first uh, 10 minutes. By yourself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's best by yourself because otherwise you're probably not going to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, you take off your shoes and, and you're walking along and sure enough, it's uncomfortable. You know, there's gravel, there's a little piece of something sharp and ah, you know. But you're really anticipating it's going to hurt 
and that creates a stiffness in your feet. Right. They're not articulating. Yeah, that's they were, right. They were built to yeah, move. Yeah, depending. Yeah, they, they, these weren't designed to be like, you know, flat. Right. And uh, but when you're out in the wilderness in, in a beautiful canyon, for example, you're you're walking away. At first, you're like, Ooh, ah, you know, and then something beautiful will catch your eye, and it's like, oh my God, look at that, and your heart kind of opens and. And you occupy your mind out yeah, of that you sensation that. to and that, you're right? Not obsessing about what what's going to the anticipation of pain, you know. Yeah. And the next thing you know, your your body moves completely differently than normal. Flowing. It's flowing like an animal. You know, you're moving. Your hips are open up, and your knees open up, and your feet start to articulate over any surface. It doesn't matter what you step on, that they will. It responds. Yeah, on oh. its own without your thinking. Yes, and it's just you know and suddenly you realize that you're just cruising along on can even be jagged volcanic rock it doesn't matter wow. no discomfort no pain to the point where sometimes you you just can't believe it you have to go back and forth over this because you know it's really happened yeah it's like this is incredible you know <laughs> and you know i mean the most unnatural thing that ever happened to a human being was the shoe you right. know why would That's you want right. to insulate yourself from the earth and from all that information and the flow of energy and yeah, connection. Yeah, yeah we, we put on shoes because we're afraid. You know, we're afraid yeah. of what we're going to feel and ah. afraid of what we're going to learn and, you know, afraid of the energies we're going to encounter. Mm. 